Okay, I got my tripod so I can show you the various. Um, I've got to turn this around because the lighting isn't good. Okay, here we go. So there's the top size. This is the 10 mesh. So this is larger than 10 mesh. As you can see, it's just plant material. Here we got the uh, what would be the 10 mesh material, very little plant material. Then we got uh, 14 mesh, also looks like plant material, seeds and stuff. Here is the um, 16, actually this would be the 14 mesh, and it also looks like it's plant material. Maybe, and this also is plant material. And like I said, I don't think I'm really going to run into the what I'm looking for until I get to the very smallest size. There's 20 mesh, or what, before 18 mesh. This is what would be 20 mesh. As you can see, it's, um, I think, also seeds and sticks and such. Okay, so now we're starting to get into a little bit of the other material. And this is 30 mesh right here. And you can see it's kind of fluffy. So again, it's organic, I think, for the most part. All right, so here we are to the, uh, this would be the 50 mesh. And this looks like it could be uh, silica and some kind of medical part, metal particles. And so that would be the, your 50 mesh. And then this is the 100 right here. And uh, this is really where I would expect to see the platinum. So the next step will be to, well, I could weigh it out. I have my scale here. I could weigh it out and then use a magnet to pull out the, uh, use a magnet to pull out the, uh, ferrous material. Okay, so I'll show you that. Got a big magnet over here, I'll get. Okay, so I'm just going to stick it underneath that uh, container. Let's see, I have a clean plate here. Okay, so I got a clean plate there, and I got the uh, thing. All right, so you can see as I move this around, uh, you can see it kind of move around, the particles move around with the magnet. And that would seem to indicate that that's the iron, iron particles uh, adhering to the magnetic uh, surface. So what I would do then is dump out everything else and then scoot it around again and dump it out again. And I just keep doing that over and over again. Because the uh, non-metallic, non-ferrous uh, material tends to get stuck with the with the ferrous material at first. All right, so I got most of it. Some of it's sticking to the surface of the, the plastic because it's moist. All right, so here we go. This is what I got of the fine material that's not ferrous. And uh, this is what I would then feed through the blue bowl and capturing all that, uh, the heaviest material that uh, isn't floated away by the water in the blue bowl. And the chances of that being platinum are pretty good. So that would be the next step. Um, I don't know that I'm going to do that right away because I don't have my blue bowl set up. And it takes a little bit to set it up. But... Um, there you go. So in just four passes of my system using compressed air, jet, a skirt, and the vacuum cleaner with a um, cyclone collector, 
I've gotten a fair amount of material and uh, this is really good news. So, at the very least, I should be able to go to like a parking lot and go five, ten miles an hour with my truck pulling the trailer and get material off that parking lot pretty easily and pretty quickly. And of course, the, uh, the dream is, like I said, to be able to do it on the highway because the highway is where it all is. And I have tried time and time again, I suppose I should turn this up so you can see me. Um, I've tried time and time again to uh, get permission to vac the surface of the road, highway slash uh, shoulder with no, no, uh, no luck. Um, I thought I could, maybe I could go on if they would cordon off an area for construction, for repaving or recoding or whatever, and before they actually got started, but, before, but after they cordoned it off, if I could go on and back it, then uh, that might be good, but they wouldn't let me do that. They have to have permission. I have to apply for permission, and then even then, I, just all the safety concerns, you know? And I just don't know that I can bother with all that, you know? Um, I mean, if I have to, I will. Because there's always a pretty good chance that they'll say no. Whenever you have a ch they have a choice of saying no or yes, they're going to say no because it's easier. And uh, so, um, so the next dream is to rig up my trailer with this underneath it. And um, I, like I said, figure out a way to raise and lower the, tr the, the backing trailer or backing cart and then drive to the highway at night like three in the morning or something and uh, uh, determine there's no little of, or none no traffic around and then drop the cart down and drive five ten miles an hour down the highway as long as I can and uh, that's that's the dream that's the and I, ideally this is gonna I think is gonna work best after a a real dry spell because then the smallest particles will be uh, loose they won't have moisture holding them down we haven't had that yet here in Michigan it's been raining almost every week this has been seems like the wettest spring we've had since I've been here and we've had some we even had a flood warning yesterday so I may have to wait till July or August to be able to actually do this uh, to my ideal circ uh, yeah ideal situation but yet I, I that gives me time to come up with this system to raise and lower the card I don't know if it'll be manual I'd like I'd love to, it to be automatic I mean pneumatic or electric so in the cab of the truck I can push a button flip a switch and the thing will go lower and raise that's what I would like but the problem is I don't have much of a budget <laughs> and so uh, We'll see, but this has been an accomplishment, uh, a positive thing in the in the uh, in the uh, efforts so far, and uh, we'll see how it goes from here.